Justice and peace should be simple, but what do I know? know? They're popping people like pimples, shoot with their eyes closed. Eyes closed. Your fit is popping, we see you, yeah, you got nice clothes. Nice clothes. But all they see is, black, black. she calling 5-0. She's all alone, she saw your joy, she wanna bother you. She at your cookout, trying her best to get you barbecued. Y'all just chilling, out here grilling, searching for solitude. She trying to get you solitary for your attitude. Whoa, shoot a black man, get vacation time. Whoa. Shoot a black woman, no one pays for crime. Whoa, shoot a horror film on your body cam. Whoa, candles and balloons where the bodies land. Yes, and that was work by our guest artist Pat with new music Candles and Balloons by Too Cool Tiff from her new EP Dark Matter, The Art of Brokenness. Artists since the beginning of time have been history's greatest recorders. Join the Charlotte Mecklenburg Library's Engage 2020 for our art and activism series as we offer a glimpse into a few artists who have shared their talents and even lives to create social and civic change. With us tonight is Pat. Pat is a mixed media artist and illustrator from Beaufort, South Carolina, currently based in the DMV. Her art brings attention to many dynamics of the art of the Black culture. As an alumna of Winston-Salem State University, her work celebrates and emphasizes the heavily criticized and appropriated ghetto culture. Her recent works have taken history and switched racial roles to shine a light on the racial injustice that Black people have constantly faced. Follow her on Instagram at Some Art by Pat. And now I'm going to turn it over to the one and only Pat. Hey, y'all. So. Like you said, my name is Pat. Um, my recent works have been focused on like reversing these racial roles that have happened. Um, but overall, like I just like to create art, art since around like people talk about the things that are very specific was that have been appropriated. You know, a lot. Um, that's just that's just what I live off of. And like I said, these recent pieces they have shown, you know, oversoles which are very necessary, especially especially in the climate of what we're going through. So let's let's jump right into it because we saw some amazing artwork by you. So, how did this idea for this art co collection come about? Like, why the swapping of roles and the images? Just give us a little bit about your thoughts. So, um, I decided to swap roles, which it really dates back to um, the very first image I did. Um, with that one, it was based upon a picture I saw of a segregated bus. And when you look at the image, you see that white people are sitting in the front. They're all comfortable. But when you look at the back of the bus, they're all climbed in back there. It's like, oh, y'all gave us two rows and that's about it. So when I did that piece, I never thought that I would turn it into a series because the type of artist that I am, I just create the pieces. I never think about, oh, let's turn this into a series. With the series mind frame of thinking, I'm very new to it. Um, so just being black, I just create the pieces based upon my experiences, previous ancestors, the ancestors experience, that's just really what I build upon. And this um, this specific series, it's grown to be very relevant and to get people to see what we go through, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. Yes, yes, I can see that. So, I mean, when you're looking at the, the images, you know, I'm talking about the reference photos. How did you choose which images to respond to? Was it, you know, just something 
um, that really spoke to you? Or was that a hard process to really choose which images you wanted to reflect in your own artwork? So to be honest, I started with a Google search and I really just typed in racism in the 60s. And so, you know, with Google, you can click an image and then it'll take you to another image. So right. to be quite honest, finding the image of white people doing black people wrong, like it wasn't hard, which is very like, it's mind blowing because it's like, why is it so easily accessible? When I was going to school, like I would see these images and like, it's just mind blowing. And it just speaks volumes to, you know, this is how we, this is how they did us. And so it wasn't, it wasn't a hard process at all. Now with choosing the pictures, I wanted to choose pictures that were action oriented, but I also wanted to choose pictures that were very simple, but they also said a lot with the simplicity of it. Yes, and you know what, your, the simplicity of your artwork, that's something that really, you know, stood out to me. And I really love that technique. So, you know, I noticed that there's very minimal um, and even exclusion of some details that appear in these, ref, you know, based on what appears in the reference photos. So why was this your chosen method? Like, and how did you decide on which details was important to include and to leave out? So, so to be honest, like, when I looked at the pictures, um, I thought about it like, okay, cool. You see these pictures, but they are very specific. Like you see exactly who was there. You see exactly who they were going against. Um, and so with creating the pictures, the illustrations that I decided to do, I was like, mm -mm. I don't want it to be specific to, oh, somebody that looks like this or somebody that looks like that. I wanted it to be like, y'all see the colors? Y'all see it's like, literally, it was white people against black people. White people didn't want to go to school with us. White people didn't want anything to do with us. So I felt like just eliminating all of that it got down to the to the basics of it and just show the color of it and didn't add any specificity to it. So y'all could see exactly what it was. And like, um, there was one picture, like you can see the cop holding the dog. Uh -huh. You don't necessarily need to see the details to know that that is a cop and they're sicking a the dog on somebody like, you can see that just from looking at the picture. Um, so I wanted to keep it very basic so that you can see exactly what it was that was going on. Yes, and I actually think you did an excellent job at that. Um, when I look at your artwork compared to the reference photos, you know, it's, it's very emotionally charged for me, but there's two different experiences, I'm, you know, I'm experiencing when I look at the, the two different ones. And what I was really wondering, and it's kind of a follow-up question, um, in the reference photos, the facial express, expressions of like all parties involved is really, it's really charged and it tells, it tells a story of its own. So do you feel like leaving out these facial expression affects um, your collection in any way, whether it drives um, for your point of the simplicity or the opposite? To be quite honest, when you look at these older pictures, they're all in black and white. Like, you know, you see white people, you know, you see black people. However, when you add in the color and you make it more seen, like, like I said, when you take out the facial expressions, it shows that the because the facial expressions are really mute when it comes to this experience mm -hmm. because there should be no reason why you see white people being so excited or fighting 
the fact that they don't want to go to school with, you know, black people. Like that's just something that just shouldn't happen. And when you think about it, it's like, dang, you don't want to go to school with me because I'm black. Like that just doesn't make sense to me. So I excluded the faces because I didn't want it to be specific to anybody. I wanted them to, I wanted it to specifically show like this was a black and white issue. Forget how people were looking. Um, Y'all need to see exactly what it is. And I know for me, like if I go to a museum and I see a detailed portrait or detailed painting, period, for me, I'm like, okay, so let me. Let me get up close to it. Let me see the detail work of it. Let me see the strokes of it from the artist. <clears throat> now, granted, everybody might not think the same, but I know for me, like, that's just something that I like to see. So for this one, I want it to be something that you can take for face value when you're up close. Say you take two sets back. I want it to be taken for face value everywhere that you saw it and you don't need to get up close to see you know exactly what it is you just when you step up far you step up close like you see you know the racism period like you just see the racism of it and that's what i wanted to establish so i don't think the i don't think the facial expressions take anything from it because what it does is it just adds on to the fact that why people were mean during that time. And you see exactly who was being mean. No, you need to see that it was just white people being mean, period. And so with this piece, I wanted to reverse it and show that, like, you know, what if it was just black people? being mean period to white people like it would just be completely different if it was that yeah and i think that clarity um comes through very well that's something i actually really enjoy about this collection um just the you, the way you communicated this message you know and it's communicate it evenly to everyone. You don't need any background in art. You don't need to know about different types of elements, strokes, anything like that. It's straight to the point. It makes it very tangible for everyone. So I do really enjoy that. And I think it really, you know, you did a, a good job with getting to getting that point across. Um, the last three images, it did hit me harder. Um, you know, as they reflect more recent events, um, still they're not very different from the previous images that you know displayed from earlier events. Why was it important for you to include these more recent events into this series? And which um, images were created first? Did you do the, you know, the images from the 60s or was it the more recent images? So it was very important to include it because you see like racism has not changed. It's only took in the form of a policeman and it's taken the form of policeman, but it still also takes the form of a white man or a white woman because you can literally just be walking into your apartment and a white woman or a white man will think, oh, well, you don't belong here because just because you're black and this specific place is not somewhere that you should be. Airbnbs, I feel like Airbnbs have really brought that more because, you know, when we traveling, like, especially if you're traveling with a group of people, like, hey, let's stay in this place or, hey, let's stay in it goes like, okay, so let me say this. Sometimes you want to spend money and you want to keep it low, but sometimes you want to spend money a little bit more. And then like with the with black people, we can keep it cheap or we can take it to where we can spend more money because that's just our dynamic. And 
the fact that you may see a black person in a a neighborhood that's predominantly white, you shouldn't call the cops because you don't know why. Like I've got an Airbnb here. Why are you coming at me like this? So I think it's very important just dealing with, you know, the things that are happening now and like just being black, you already got a struggle being black and trans. That's a whole other struggle and being black and binary, you know, that's a struggle. Like I feel like being black and trans and being black and binary, that's a struggle that I specifically do not know, but it's a struggle that happens because white people definitely don't understand black people. We're still, you know, grasping, you know, the process of that. So I feel like showing these images, it one creates a fantasy world for black people because we get to see ourselves on the other side of it. We don't have to see ourselves being a victim. White people can see themselves as a victim as the victim. And hopefully it gets them to understand a little bit more because when you see heart wrenching photos, like look at this one. If it was a white person being kneeled on by a black man, it's honestly, it's really no telling about what would have happened. So I think showing these images show that what we're going through now is no different than what we're going through before. It's just taking the form of something else. Yes, and I think people have a hard time grasping that and a a hard time really understanding that. So yeah, you adding those pictures, those, you know, later images to that collection, I think it really does help to see, especially if you don't even have the reference photos to look at, you just see a, a straight, collection together you know it's nothing to indicate any time difference besides the clothing and the later yeah. photos so that definitely drives that point okay and i'm just gonna take a break to decide for this because you know i'm an artist too i love art i love asking yeah, about yeah. technique let me ask let, just real quick you know how did you go about doing like doing the actual artwork? Was it all done digitally? Um, did it take a long time to complete? Did you kind of set it to the side, come back to it? What's some of your methods you used? Okay, so um, like I said at the beginning, the very first piece I did, I just did it because, you know, I just wanted to see something different. Um, so that's been going on since that started in 2018. Um, okay. The some of the ones that are centered around the 60s, 30s, like I did a piece um, last year. So it's if you want to get down to the nitty gritty, it's been going on since 2018. Um, the pieces they're hard to do. The hardest part is doing the research and seeing the images. Like there's so many images that I haven't even touched on. Um, But I did decide to do a lot of them digitally because I wanted them to be seen on social media. I wanted them to be able to be printed and it it not take away from anything. So um like I said I did a lot of them digitally like the very this picture right here that's on the screen mm-hmm. I didn't do that digitally excuse me I did that just just creating the image of what I saw. And you see things like, if you look, you'll see I'm rooting for everybody that's black. I mm-hmm. love HBCUs like I did that one just from, hmm, I'm going to just create it and put it on a canvas. And like, if you look like in the windows, like the picture really goes deep for me. If you look into the windows, like 
if the roles were reversed, I feel like the sky is brighter. You don't even see no, you don't even see the sky in those pictures. I feel mm -hmm. like, well, for me, it was, I'm going to make the sky seen. I'm going to show y'all the birds that are flying in the window. I want y'all to see the happiness. And when it came down to the digital pieces, my thought process kind of changed because I wanted it to get down to the nitty gritty of things. I wanted everybody to see like, this is the fantasy that we have. And the picture that's up there right now is so crazy to me. Like <laughs> this woman called the cops cause she saw a black man. He was minding his business. And you know, white people love their dogs. So mm -hmm. to see her doing it. <laughs> you know, you capturing this, this, <laughs> this image and in this simplistic way, I think this instance was already a very clear example of that entitlement of that. Um, yeah, it was a very clear example. So when you put it into a, a image form and you took out the details and you simplified it even more. It's just like, there it is. Like, <laughs> there it is. Yes. There it is. Yes. Like, it's clear, like, man, why are you, you so caught up in being racist that you have now at this point, yoked this dog up. I'm pretty sure that dog was struggling, but you so focused on being racist and this black man is endangering me to the point that you have now yoked this dog up. She ended up losing the dog and it wasn't even worth it because he wasn't bothering anyone. He was going on about his business and you decided to make it your mission to get another black man locked up. And it's again, history just going on. But yes, that, that was a very clear form. And I'm gonna jump back into that, you know, your experience while creating these images. I know you saw a lot of images that were just, it's hard, it's hard to look at, it's hard to um, really dig into. So what was this experience like for you creating this art collection that's just as much personal as it is political? And how did you protect like protect your well being during this process? Did you have to just step away or what was that like for you? So the hardest part was finding the images. So finding the images, you see the image that you want, but you also see these trailing images that come with it. So that part was hard. And like, just on a personal level, I'm just black. You know, mm -hmm. I've been in cases where I get stopped, but I've gotten stopped by the police. And the very first thought is, God, please don't let let me die. And it's questioning that right. that's the very first thought that I have in my mind. But it's very personal to me, especially with um my mom and other people, my my grandma, great grandma going through it. Like my mom, she um she had a she had a, a stomach pain. And so she goes to the doctor, of course she's sitting in the color section and they don't see her, you know, right, right off the bat. So it takes a little time for them to see her. And when they finally see her, they're like, look, if we would have waited any longer, you would have died. So it's just like, you didn't want to see me because I'm black. And then when you think about the reasons why people didn't want to go to school with us, it didn't have any basis upon it. Like, why are you... Why do you not want us to get an education like you all? Because you feel like the education that y'all get, we shouldn't be able to access it. And it's, so it's very personal, but it's, it's, it's very political because when you go to George Floyd, that makes no sense. When you go to Breonna Taylor, it's like, that's a whole other story. Like it, why did she not get the justice that 
she deserve? Why are trans brothers and sisters not getting the justice that they deserve? Because it's all swept under the rug. Um, as far as protecting, you know, my well-being, I this is an ongoing series. Okay. Just because there's so many things to touch on. So I do it in pieces. Like if I was to do it all at one time, I'd be a puddle of tears. Yeah. Just being honest. Like I'd be a puddle of tears. I can't, I wouldn't be able to fully put everything into it because, you know, like I just know myself, I wouldn't be able to handle it, which is why I've ne I haven't touched the Breonna Taylor case in reference to reversing roles because I'm still not at a place where I can, I, I can't do that just right. yet, especially being a black woman. It's just, it's just too hard for me to do it. Yes, that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. And especially hearing that this is a ongoing project. Um, you know what, Pat, when I was, when I was looking at these images and I didn't know the answer to this yet of whether it was an ongoing um, project, but I was like, you know, I really hope there there's not many new images for you to add, you know, for recent things. I really hope that that's, you know, not a thing, but even as you continue to just, you know, dig through and process past events um, or just injustices that goes on day to day. So with your artwork, what do you hope to inspire with this collection? What do you hope people take from this collection? So um, I hope to inspire white people to do more because y'all need to see this. Y'all need to digest it. And y'all need to put forth more effort. Like black people, we are tired. We literally have to fight every day just for us to get justice. And even when we fight, justice is not served. And I think once you start getting other races, specifically white people, because really, I hate to say it, but anybody outside of being white, like people don't, like you have to have a gang of black people come behind you for people to take it serious. And you see that with these companies, like, Companies were not coming to bat for us like you see it now. They were literally like, oh, some companies weren't saying anything. But after the George Floyd incident, everybody, you got PetSmart saying something. You have Nike, you have Adidas, you have all these companies that are trying to stand and be behind Black, be behind Black Lives Matter. But y'all need to be there when it's not anything that's plastered. I want people to come to our defense, even with cases that may not necessarily be, you know, broadcasted. Like, I don't know what kind of team they need to have, but they need to have somebody that can relay the message and make them fight more. Because like I said, like black people, we're tired. This is something, shoot. We always have to fight for this. And so we need some backup at this point because when we write, when we tear up things, or even when we're peaceful and we speak on these things, like people don't, people don't take us serious. So I want white people to get mad when they see these type of images, but I also want them to be like, you know what? I understand. I get it. So I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna fight to you know, make sure I don't have anybody else step into these shoes. So, yeah. yeah. And it definitely takes a community. It definitely takes using different people's um, privilege in putting it together and just, you know, really trying to make some change happen. So in your opinion, what do you believe the role of a black artist is in the fight for justice and liberation? Um, so I feel like black people, black artists should really be held just 
to the standard of just being black. And one thing I've seen is like, we expect outside of being a visual artist, we expect um, musicians, we expect them to, oh, y'all need to come to the forefront and y'all need to speak on these issues. Um, but I feel like as a black artist, you should do your own form of fighting because for me, making these images is my form of fighting. For the next black artist, it may be, oh, well, I'm just gonna be on the forefront fighting. So I think I don't think we should hold black artists to the point where, oh, well, you need to create these images. Cause I know for myself, I started art, I've donated to, you know, bail funds, I've signed petitions, I've been on the front, front, front line fighting for numerous people. So I feel like um when it comes to artists, like if you feel like your form of fighting is through art thank you because it gets it out there to social media. But at the same time, I don't expect all black artists to do that because they can fight in other ways. So. Yes. That's a very, (laughs) I've I've heard very um, many different responses to that. I think that's a, that's a topic that is brought up a lot when it comes to the black artists and their responsibility. So thank you for touching on that. So, Let's talk about you personally. What inspires you to create art? What gets you going? Um, honestly, I just get inspired by anything. Like I really get inspired by the black experience, and you know, just being black, you you gain inspiration from everywhere. I recently in my studio in C. Um. And going from North Carolina and coming to, you know, the DMV and then having a studio in DC, I see different people. I see different establishments. Um, I know specifically with DC, I see so many black people. Like, it's crazy. I see black people in front of the store. Um, I think, well, not I think, but I know like that's what's really driven me to even see different aspects of it. Um, One of the recent um, inspirations has been going to museums. So I went to the Philadelphia Museum of Art and you know, with COVID, a lot of things are shut down. So I went to the Philadelphia Museum of Art and they don't have the extra exhibits. They just have the basics. So I've seen the American art, Asian art, mm-hmm. all the other stuff. But seeing the American art and only seeing, you know, white people except for that one piece of a hallway, that's really inspired me to create more art that's centered around the Black experience because these museums, and it goes outside of the Philadelphia Museum of Art, it goes past them into other um, other museums. Once you take out the, once you take out the exhibits and you get down to the nitty gritty, mm-hmm. um, these museums, these the American art section of the museums, they don't touch on black people. So that's been a big inspiration for me moving forward with my art. Yes, yes. Okay, and I definitely want want to hear about any current projects you're working on now, something new, something you kind of just have an idea of. Um, a little <laughs> <deeper>. <laughs> a little bit of this and that. So <laughs> so my recent um series is centered around the American art stuff that I've seen in these museums. I'm creating um, images for me as a black lesbian woman. I'm creating these, recreating these images so that the American art portion of these museums will fit me, they'll fit my people. So the very first um, 
the first it's a I'm gonna say it's a mini series, but um this will it'll be just a it's it'll be really a few pieces um that'll go to that I'll be releasing on my birthday. So it'll just you know be centered around that being a black lesbian woman and I'll show these pieces in the form of you know what we typically see in these American art museums. Like I really just want to recreate the whole American art, you know, right. atmosphere. So that includes people like me. Cause when you go, I don't see nobody looks like me. So that's, that's what my next series is building upon. Yes. And that's, that's all about that representation. Really, really love the idea. So everyone, please look out for that amazing new artwork. I know I'll be looking out for it. And thank you all for watching. Um, thank you for joining us today. Tune in next week. Be sure to tune in for our last installment of this series with Sherelle Rowland, moderated by Sierra Harris. And we'll see you then. Justice and peace should be simple, but what do I know? Do know? They're popping people like pimples, shoot with their eyes closed. Your okay, no fit is popping, we see you, yeah, you got nice clothes. Nice clothes. But all they see is, black, black. she calling 5-0. She's all alone, she saw your joy, she wanna bother you. She at your cookout trying her best to get you barbecued. Y'all just chilling out here grilling, searching for solitude. She trying to get you solitary for your attitude. Whoa, shoot a black man, get vacation time. Whoa, shoot a black woman, no one pays for crime. Whoa, shoot a horror film on your body cam. Whoa, candles and balloons where the bodies land.